Hey, I'm Dr. Morales. I'm a board certified cardiologist and electrophysiologist and I've treated thousands of patients with atrial fibrillation. In this video, I'm going to discuss all the things that you can do to treat atrial fibrillation at home. I'm going to talk about how to minimize episodes, how to track your episodes, how to stop your episodes, as well as improve atrial fibrillation in the long term. All things you can do at home without your doc with do doctor's prescription or without having to, to, to see a doctor. Things you can do on your own at home are all the things that I'm going to discuss in this video. If you like this video, go ahead and check out my channel, Dr. A. Fib, where you'll see a lot more videos about atrial fibrillation that I have created. Uh, also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of other new videos that I created as well. So, why did I create a video about how to take care of AFib at home? Because I have countless people who reach out to me who tell me that either it's very hard to get an appointment with their doctor, the doctor's office doesn't call them back, or it takes months to get in to see their doctor, maybe they don't have a specialist close to where they live, or whether that's a cardiologist or even more rarer, electrophysiologist like myself who specializes in atrial fibrillation. Those opportunities are so rare for some patients out there that they ultimately have to take their own health into their own hands which is unfortunate, but it's the reality for a lot of patients out there, not only just in the United States, but across the world as well, where it can be just so hard to see a, a specialist to get better insight into what to do with their atrial fibrillation and how to actually improve your symptoms. And so these are all things that you can do at home to improve your symptoms long term and avoid hospitalizations, avoid the ER, and improve your symptoms at home. But also keep in mind that there are going to be times when your doctor's help is absolutely essential. There's going to be times where changing your medications with your doctor is absolutely essential. There's going to be times where these things don't work and your symptoms are severe. You, are, you have no choice, but you really should go into a, a, an emergency room, okay? But these are all things that you can do at home, which I think in the long term, if you take this, these tips that I'm giving to you and apply it into your life and you do it for the long term, you're going to improve your symptoms of AFib. You're going to have less doctor visits, less emergency room visits. So let's get into things that you can do at home to improve atrial fibrillation. Number one would be to identify and reduce triggers of atrial fibrillation. People who have AFib who comes and goes, usually they can find a pattern of things that tend to set off their atrial fibrillation. And it can be very variable from person to person, so it's not the same for everybody. It's not like everybody needs to avoid this and their atrial will get better. It's very dependent on person to person, so you have to be a little bit of a detective to figure out what is it that best sets off your atrial fibrillation. For some people, it can be sleep, sleep deprivation. They know that if I don't sleep very well, well, then I'm going to start getting episodes of AFib. And that can certainly trigger a lot of people's AFib, whether that's the sleep deprivation by itself or potentially the, what people do when they're very sleepy. They drink a lot of caffeine. Maybe you get dehydrated from all that all that coffee and caffeine and it's kind of like a cascade which sets up episodes of AFib. Certainly sleep deprivation, um, getting ill for any reason, cold flus and trying to minimize that can help reduce how much AFib episodes you have. And there certainly are a lot of dietary triggers that people have had, uh, which can certainly set out people's AFib. And it can, again, vary from person to person. For some people, it may be a very uh, processed food meal that has a lot of sodium in it and increases their blood pressure. Some people may be very uh, fatty food or, or that gives them a lot of belching. Some people, when they have something very uh, spicy or heavy that gives them heartburn, they know that's going to set off their AFib. Uh, there may, I've had a few patients who found that it was dairy that was causing their, their AFib episodes. So it can be very individual. So if you get an episode, try to think of what you may have eaten in the last day and see if you can figure out a pattern and because avoiding that trigger can certainly reduce the amount of AFib episodes that you're currently having. Now, mentioning tracking AFib, there are certainly a lot of at home devices and figuring out what works, what helps reducing AFib episodes involves a bit of tracking it yourself. And there's a lot of at home devices that you can have at home, do not require any prescription whatsoever where you can keep track of your AFib. Not everybody feels their AFib. Or sometimes people feel very subtle symptoms and they want to know if they're an AFib or not. One of my favorite devices is called a CardioMobile. It's a tiny device, a little bit smaller than a credit card. Uh, you put your fingers on it and it takes a simplified EKG, which takes a picture and sends it over to your phone. And it'll tell you if you're an AFib or not. Uh, but that's one of many options these days. There's actually many companies coming out with these similar 
at home products. Another very popular one is an Apple Watch. Apple Watch has been around for, for many years now, and the EKG sensor has also been around for many years, and the newer generations just keep getting better and better. So it's always looking at your heart through a pulse. Uh, it tells if your heart rate is irregular or rapid, and it gives you a notification. And then you can do EKG by putting your finger on the watch itself, and it'll do a simplified EKG picture and tell you if you're an AFib or not. Um, Fitbit just came out with an option as well. It also does, does the very similar things, and there's also a variety of options. So being able to track your AFib episodes also can be very useful to help you identify triggers, things that may be at home that are kind of helping to set off your atrial fibrillation. But ultimately, getting an episode of atrial fibrillation, you know, sometimes people can get severe symptoms and they don't want to go away. And so what are things that you can do at home that can help reduce uh, or stop an episode of atrial fibrillation when you're already having one? Um, there's a couple of things that you can do at home that can stop an atrial fibrillation episode. Uh, one of them will commonly be uh, vagal maneuvers. Vagal maneuvers are something that can help a variety of different tachycardias, uh, which are rapid heart rates. It can help slow the heart rate down and alleviate symptoms, and sometimes might even be able to stop the AFib episode as well. Uh, one of them is called the Valsalva maneuver. Basically, you would take a deep breath and push down on your stomach, kind of like what you're having like, when you're going to, to the bathroom and have a bowel movement, just like and push down with, with your muscles as, you know, as hard as you can for like you know, a good 10 to 20 seconds, and that can definitely slow your heart rate down. Uh, another thing would be a carotid massage. Carotid massage is uh, massaging the main artery right here. There's carotid is right here, right where you feel the pulse the strongest, which is right about here for me. Uh, there's a lot of nerve endings over there in that area that go down to your heart. So you would massage it in a circular fashion for a couple of minutes. Nice, good, steady pressure uh, can slow your heart rate down. You can then do the other side as well if you need to. You can kind of repeat it going back and forth, but never do both at, at the same time. That can help slow your heart rate down and potentially stop an AFib episode. Another thing that you can do at home is what's called a diver's reflex. That's kind of a sudden shock to your face with very cold uh, water. Uh, usually you would get a bucket of ice cold water and put your face in it and that shock of something severely cold hitting your face very quickly can activate your vagus nerve and ultimately uh, slow down your heart rate and stop an episode of atrial fibrillation. Another thing I've had people do, uh, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but I've had countless people tell me is actually exercise. I've had a few patients that tell me like, oh, if I have get AFib, if I go on the treadmill, usually something cardiovascular, it's not lifting weights, whether that's an exercise bike, getting on the treadmill, it'll probably going up and down stairs rapidly, it'll probably stop their AFib. Um, now, I would counsel that if you're not used to exercising, something you're not really uh, do very often, please don't do that one. You might get too dizzy or lightheaded doing that. But if you're kind of used to doing some exercise, it's certainly something that can be very helpful to stop your AFib episode at home. Another thing you can do at home, but you do need to kind of clear this by your doctor, is to take extra medication. Uh, there are a variety of medications that are used for atrial fibrillation that I tell my patients that they can take extra uh, when they get an episode of AFib. There is also specifically... Med rhythm medications that uh, one of them is called flecainide. It has a what's called a pill in the pocket technique, where you take a high dosage of that medication when you're getting AFib, and it can help stop uh, AFib episodes. Usually, that's a dosage of about 200 milligrams. But again, always when it comes to taking extra medications, always ask your doctor if it's safe for something you to do. Uh, sometimes, when people are taking uh, extra medications, it's very important to monitor your blood pressure because a lot of these medications can affect your blood pressure, maybe make your blood pressure go too low. So, having a blood pressure cup, knowing something that you can monitor your blood pressure with, can certainly help uh, if you're trying to take extra medication to suppress or stop an, an AFib episode. So, those are certain things that you can do to stop AFib episodes when you're having them at home. Now, big picture, what are things that can reduce AFib in the long term. Reduce how much AFib have you're having, potentially even reverse it to where you're having much less AFib, maybe even that where you're having little to no AFib. Well, that goes down to figuring out what is actually caused your AFib to begin with, okay? There's a couple of common risk factors that are more commonly caused that lead to people having AFib. Most common ones would be obesity, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, sleep apnea, which is a disorder where people will stop breathing briefly while they're sleeping, alcohol abuse, and a lot of these things are modifiable. And these are things that lifestyle modifications can severely help with these, uh, with this, uh, what they fit, and reduce the amount of episodes that, that you're having. And that's why lifestyle modifications are such a key component of reversing atrial fibrillation and improving it naturally at home. Lifestyle modifications are a class one indication, and it's a very important recommendation tip from the American Heart Association. But yet, many patients tell me that their doctors rarely ever tell them 
how to do it, okay? Uh, so improving AFib uh, naturally, which usually involves weight loss, removes, removing processed foods, removing triggers that can cause AFib, such as added sodium and a lot of added sugar, keeping your food as natural as possible, reducing alcohol consumption, can all in the long term reduce AFib, reduce inflammation that could be causing AFib, and kind of goes back to reducing the things that caused AFib to begin with. But all those things take time, they take a commitment. Nobody can reverse AFib in a few weeks or in a month, all, and then that's it. You gotta make you stick with it, and you gotta stick with it long term to really get the best results. That's why I created the Take Control Over AFib program. The Take Control Over AFib program is my step by step plan on everything you need to do that can reverse and improve AFib naturally at home is right there in one place. You get a step by step plan, cover diet and lifestyle, sleep, stress, all the things that I know that can make AFib worse, I'll give you a step-by-step -step plan of how to reverse it naturally. So right underneath this video, there'll be a link to, to my Take Control Over AFib program where you'll learn more about the program itself, you'll learn what's included in the program, and you'll be able to see testimonies of people who have actually taken the program and see what they have to say about the program. So click on the link underneath the video, check it out for yourself, and I wish you nothing but the best for your AFib symptoms. And I really hope that this video helps you to learn better how to treat your atrial fibrillation at home, for those of you who really have trouble uh, having access to your doctor, I hope it's really beneficial.